Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, everyone involved in setting up this event uh, and the work of the European Municipalist School. Um, <clears throat> I am here told to go here by the women in the uh, in the same collective. So I, gender uh, balance is something that we uh, are very essential to our, our practice. So I appreciate that we are um, not able to achieve that today, but you, you understand why it was about availability. So I'd like to start telling you a little of our collective who are working to uh, bring together the People's Plan for Glasgow based on the values of radical municipalism and also to give you a little um, background on Glasgow the city and to try and uh, answer some of the, the questions that have been set. So solidarity against neoliberal extremism was uh, established in 2017 and its purpose was to connect the systemic issues um, affecting not just Glasgow, but we are, we are a kind of outward looking we are collective, but we, are, we have taken um, Glasgow as a focus because it has extremely high levels of inequality, poor health and a history of community engagement. Um, very famously, the, the rent strikes during the, during the, the war, uh, uh, the First World War, um, tanks were brought onto the streets in, in George Square to, to crush uh, the, the, the activist, activism that happened then. And there's a, one of the fam famous women, Mary Barber, was one of the kind of activists at that time. And in the 70s, we had a person called um, Jimmy Reed, who led a work in at the Clydeside uh, shipyards. And so to some extent, there's, there's a, a strong left activism in the city. But uh, we noticed that, that, that there was growing neoliberal impacts at all levels in in the city and that the institutions were being more and more um, influenced by neoliberal ideology. And Sane wanted to challenge the idea of neoliberalism as a, a normal state of affairs and point out that its actual ideology, its capitalist ideology, and its mindset was extreme, an extremist perspective, and it was inflicting a huge amount of structural violence and state violence against the people of the city and in the wider context. So in 2017, we had a two-day conference called the uh, Capitalism versus Democracy. And we had about well, over a hundred people come and take part over two days to discuss the issues. And the, the, the success that has happened in Barcelona, Bon Comu, very much influenced um, our, our thinking and we we recognise that the fearless cities movement was embodied so much of what we wanted to see in the city uh, and that was missing and uh, we have identified what we call the kind of landscape of resistance in this in the city where there are many many people working on 
asylum seekers in, in refugees' rights, um, on women's rights, on uh, gen gender equality, gender rights, uh, uh, against poverty, or a whole range of issues. But often these organisations perhaps do not speak to each other, uh, or don't, don't have a shared vision for the city. Um, and we recognised there was um, there were a number of organisations, one called Get Glasgow Moving, who have been working for a number of years and have a community transport strategy, which is based on municipalist ideas of, of, of transport. And other organisations such as Living Rent, which is a kind of UK-wide um, union of of you know, people who, who who rent properties um, but they have f fought against the, the privatization of so much social housing and back in 2003 the housing stock in Glasgow was transferred from the ownership within the local council into the the Glasgow Housing Association. So here we see how the institutes, the, the institutions have been changed and this process has gone on rapidly in Glasgow and the City Council has split its services up into what's called arm's length organisations who either have sort of charitable status or as pseudo independent companies and what one of the one of the upshots of that policy is the accrual of more and more debt which is then allocated to these arms length organizations and is able to be moved off the the books of of the council and the uh, the council itself has moved politically uh, in the last elections in, in 2015 from Labour um, power to the Scottish Nationalist Party has almost a majority um, and with the Green Party having a few councillors to influence it and one of the difficulties of the city is there is a pretense of participatory budgeting, this pretense of consultation. Um, but the reality is that the, the city is, is, is really captured by corporate interests and the vision for the city is um, an event city. So we've had the 2014 Commonwealth Games, we are seen as can we attract um, conventions to the city, can we build more hotels, what, how do we rate as the best breakfasts in Europe. So these these kind of ideas that the city is an economic generator uh, and essentially a, a tri trickle down concept of we bring rich people to the city, they spend their money and people can have, have insecure jobs, uh, insecure low paid jobs and so we see the 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 level of poverty in in the uh, in Glasgow for child poverty is about thirty percent of children living in the city are in poverty, and obviously in some areas that is significantly higher. So, hence the the fact that we've we've moved as lockdown came in in, in February in twenty twenty. We were working with uh, an organisation called Enough Scotland, so it's a degrowth organisation, anti-capitalist, and we were working along with them to take out a programme across the city, working with uh, people towards this um, people's plan for the city, because our analysis had shown us that the, the city itself is hugely complex and many of the electorate are disengaged from the, 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 the democratic processes that exist and those themselves are 
are, are poor and our levels of representation are, are, are very, very low. So in one of the poorest areas of Glasgow called Postle Park, only 19% of people took part in the last local election. So 80% of the people didn't even use their vote. So our aim is to, st is to stand people in the next local government elections, which are in May 2022, on the People's Plan platform. But in answer to the questions that have been set about how we influence institutions, we recognise that being elected to power is only one step in the kind of radical municipalism process because it's the, the, the institutions themselves are so soaked in kind of managerialism and neoliberal um, senses of re reality that process of radical municipalism in a city like Glasgow will be a, a long-term project um, and, and must be understood as transformative rather than reformist. And one of the things that which has given us energy for that process is the, the fact that a climate emergency has been um, you know, recognised at the city level as well as at the national level. And those people involved in the development of the People's Plan are using this as a stimulus to um, challenge the, the, the capitalist uh, vision of the, of the future and to try and bring a much richer, more varied a civic imagination to the, to the city and the idea of the people's plan is to have consultation processes which which use the politics of proximity which will happen in every neighborhood so we are setting up assemblies right across the city but also looking at thematic groups bringing people together around the, the key areas of the city that um, issues like housing, like waste, like uh, the use of public spaces. Because one of the key issues is that uh, uh, many of the commons spaces have been, uh, are under threat of privatisation, of being sold off. We've had situations where there's been a lot of um, housing for student accommodation, all of which has been funded by hedge funds. Uh, and the, even the universities, the, the city has three sort of major universities and that model of bringing students to the city and generating income like that has obviously been hit by COVID. So our project is one of, of political education and of engagement at the most grassroots level. And I want to stop now and I'd be happy to, 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 to answer any, any questions about that you might have about the situation in Glasgow, but I want to make sure that we leave plenty of time for discussion. And I wanted to thank uh, Maria as well, I know she's gone now, but she came and spoke to us uh, recently along with Tony from Barcelona on Camus. So this solidarity with the European movement, we feel very European in Glasgow, we feel very much part of the world. Um, uh, and you know, it's just a pleasure to be here. Thank you.